In this video we're going to be looking at behavioral code uh, within Verilog. And behavioral code or behavioral sections are used to describe hardware circuits. at a more abstract level. So these are things when you want to have loops, conditional statements, or even control the parallelism in your design. Noting that it, it's not really possible, it is using the conditional operator, but um, in an assigned statement, if we want to use you now for loop, if, else, or a case statement, um, or we want to be able to use blocking or non blocking, which we're going to talk about, um, assignment operators, then we need to use behavioral code. And the way we use behavioral code is we have an always block. Always at, and this is what's known as the sensitivity list, do something. Normally you'll have a begin and end, which are like the curly braces in C. Uh, and this always block executes repeatedly when something in the sensitivity list changes. Or it's true. All right, so is a high level be operating continuously, or if we're looking for edges, we'll be operating only when those edges happen. Okay, so level or edge. All right, so let's have a look at a couple of always blocks. So always at a or b or select. So I'm going to be doing a multiplexer here. Begin. And then I'm going to say if select equals equals 1b naught q is equal to a else q is equal to b. End. And what that's effectively modelled is a multiplexer with two inputs, one output, and one select or control line. What the sensitivity list, this part here, does is if any of these inputs are true, slash change, then execute the always block. So then we go through and we can use our normal comparison operators um, to be able, and conditional statements just like C to be able to assign our output. The only other thing you need to remember is that the left hand side within an always block must be a reg. All right, and it must be a register because it needs to hold its value when this always block is not executing. Otherwise, logically, it would break down. All right, so the outputs, anything on the left hand side and an always block, must be a reg. These can be wires. Inputs can be wires, that's fine. Anything else used inside of it. But outputs must be registers. Anything assigned within an always block must be a register. Another example of the same multiplexer, 
always at A or B or select. Begin. We could use a switch case. Now in Verilog, that's actually just modeled as case statement. And it looks a little bit like this. One B naught colon Q equals A. One B one colon Q equals B. And end case and then end the begin that we had up here. Right, so this is a case statement. Works in a similar way as it would in C. Um, and whatever the value of select is, um, and it can be a bus, it doesn't have to be just a single bit, we then operate based on that. Notion we don't need break statements, right? There's no fall through, uh, case fall through possible in Verilog. What you must remember, and in both of these cases it hasn't been an issue, but you must always assign every possible combination of inputs. And by assign I mean provide a code path, or, or in this case provide circuitry, um, within an always block. Otherwise, you may get a latch. Okay, if you want a latch, then that's fine, that, right? But normally you don't want a latch. So what I mean by is that we couldn't just have this if statement, right? If select is false, do something. Else, do something else, all right? If we were to remove that, right? we haven't said, we haven't created hardware that then acts on, well, what happens if select is equal to 1, for example? What, remember, you're building hardware here. It can't just not exist. So you need to specify as part of your circuit, part of your hardware description, what each combination of inputs and what would happen for them. All right? So that may mean that you need an else statement. Um, okay, else, like that. Uh, or it may mean that uh, you need to use a default, okay? E.g. default case. If none of the conditions are true, then so something has to be some default state or an else statement is required. All right, but just remember that. Otherwise, you'll get these inferred latches, which is of normally not required and going to cause all sorts of havoc inside your uh, FPGA design. Using always blocks, we can also create a sequential logic circuit. So you'll note these multiplexes, they're combinational. But we can also create a combination, uh, sorry, sequential logic circuits. So always at positive edge. So remember, flip-flops, sequential uh, devices are edge triggered. Always at clock. Begin. So always at the positive edge or a rising edge of the clock. Q is equal to data. And end. Where this would be an input. Input. That would be an output register. And what we created here is a D flip-flop. All right, it's got memory because when clock is either high or low or falling edge, all right, anywhere it's not a positive edge, Q is going to hold its state. All right, this is going to remember it. It's a register. It's computer memory, so it will hold its state. All right, data is the input coming in, so we've made effectively clock Q D a D flip flop. All right, and we could complicate that further and say, well, actually, we want an asynchronous clear. So always at pause edge of the clock or neg edge of clear. 
Okay, begin. If not clear, Q is equal to zero, oh, one B zero, else Q is equal to one B one. And don't worry about this less than or equal to little sign I'm doing here at the moment. We're going to cover that next. All right, so this would be a, oh, not 1B1, data. This would be a D flip-flop with an asynchronous clear. So there's D, not clear, and there's Q. All right, and... Because the if statement checks the clear first, we see that it is it takes priority, as we would expect for an asynchronous input. Also note, because it is active low, we want a negative edge going clear, so we want to see this part. Then this part checks, has we reached that level, right? Because these are normally level sensitive, whereas the clock is normally edge sensitive. But you need both. You need the not here and you need the negative edge to be able to detect that asynchronous input. All right. The last thing we're going to have a look at quickly is the difference between blocking and non-blocking. Now we saw in continuous assignment this possibility of a race condition. All right, so let's have a look at that inside a behavioral uh, piece of code. So if I have an always statement always at A or B or C and we'll go begin and end. If I was to do something like C, uh, let's do this B to A and C to B, we're going to have a problem here. The less than or equal to symbol is what's known as a non-blocking assignment. And what that basically means is these two happen in parallel. Just like they would in a continuous assignment stage. All right, so these two run in parallel. Because of that, it's a little bit hard to know which one is going to operate first, and we end up with a race condition again. All right, so this is definitely not what we want to happen. All right, remembering even though this line and then this line, the order of lines does not dictate the order of operation. We're creating hardware now. Therefore, the way we get around this, if this is what you really want to do, okay, we'll leave that there. Fix by using blocking statements. And we change it so that it looked like this. And when you use the equal sign by itself, it forces sequential operation based on the order of the lines. All right, so you can get sequential operation when using uh, behavioral code by using single equals. This is what's known as a blocking statement. However, I don't suggest that you use it unless required. Okay, unless it's absolutely necessary, always use non-blocking because non-blocking should be parallel, which should be equal to faster, better code or better hardware. Right, and the whole reason you're normally designing on an FPGA is to exploit that parallelism that's inherent in it. Right, unless it has to be uh, sequential, then use non-blocking statements. All right, always use them. You need to have a reason why you would be using blocking otherwise. Okay, so a quick summary of behavioral code. Use described hardware circuits at a more abstract level rather than using the... Uh, actual primitives like gates or, or the symbols themselves and we can then do things like conditional statements and loops and even like we saw control the parallelism in your circuit. We always have an always block okay whenever you see always that's behavioral part of your code 
and you always have a sensitivity list. Whenever something in that sensitivity list changes, that's when you come into and execute the uh, uh, the code or the hardware within that always block. So this repeats over and over as things are changing in that sensitivity list. We saw a multiplexer using if and else, remembering that the output must be a register, a reg, when we're using behavioral code. And we saw an always using a case statement, which is quite a nice, convenient way of doing it. And remembering that you must always assign every possible combination. So in this case, one bit, I need to assign 0 and 1. If it was two bits, I'd have to do 0, 1, 2, and 3. I'd have to assign cases for each of those. Otherwise, I'd need to use a default. Same thing for if statements. You must always have an else associated with them. Otherwise, you'll end up with a latch. We had to look at the D flip-flop, right? Noting that we want edge detection. We're using a non-blocking statement here. The output would be a reg. And it will, because being a reg, hold its value between uh, running this particular uh, piece of code. And remembering a D flip-flop doesn't change if data changes. It only changes when clock changes. Had a look at how to add in an asynchronous clear into that. And then we had a look at the, non -dif the difference between blocking and non-blocking assignments.